To replace the main PCB, the first thing we need to do is power off the chair, then unplug it. Next, we need to open the levers on the inline connector and remove the wiring from both sides. If you're working on the chair that's connected to a kiosk system, remove the kiosk cable harness from the cable guide, as well as the cable from the main PCB. Next, we'll use a Phillips head screwdriver to remove the three screws that secure the rear shroud to the chair. Then we can slide the shroud backward and then tip it over, resting it on the floor next to the chair. Okay, next we'll use the Phillips head screwdriver again to remove the three screws that secure the PCB cover. And we can remove that cover. You'll need to pull up firmly at the rear as there are tabs installed over slots that have a rather secure connection. Okay, next we can unplug all of the connectors from the main PCB. And then use a Phillips head screwdriver to remove the four screws that secure the PCB to the chair. Okay, then we can slide the PCB out from under the cabling. Just try not to disturb the cabling any more than necessary. And remove it. Okay, to install the new PCB then we'll slide it back in under that cabling. and we can replace the four screws to secure it to the chair. Now we're ready to reconnect all of the connectors to the PCB and all those connectors are color coded with the exception of one in the rear left hand corner as you're facing the PCB there and also the cable that runs to the remotely controlled system with that red connector attaches to the blue connector along the side of the board facing you. Okay, now we're ready to replace the PCB cover. Note the tabs in the rear of the PCB area. You need to install the slots on the PCB tray over those tabs and push down firmly to secure it. Use your hands to make sure that the slots uh, are installed successfully over those tabs. The screw holes will then be aligned and you can replace the three screws to secure the cover.
Okay, next we need to remove the nine screws that secure the plastic panel to the underside of the shroud. Then we can twist the ends of that remotely control system cable and feed it through the hole we drilled in the rear of the shroud. Next we're going to install a zip tie temporarily on the casing just on the outside of the shroud just to keep that wiring from falling back into the shroud while we're reinstalling the shroud on the chair. Okay, then we can replace that black plastic panel and the nine screws to secure it. Okay, then we can flip that shroud back over carefully into position, putting as little strain on that cable as possible, and slide it into position. Now it's important that the edges of the shroud are installed between the black plastic side panels and the guides. In this case, it is not, so you can see he had to move the shroud over to the outside of the guide, so it's installed between the guide and the side panel. Okay, once the shroud's installed properly, we can replace the three screws to secure it. Then we can use a wire cutter to cut that temporary zip tie carefully off of the cable. Twist the ends of each wire, and then we'll install those into the inline connector. If you're working on a chair connected to a kiosk system, it's important to install the positive wire on the right and the negative on the left, or the blue wire on the right and the green wire on the left. Once the wiring's inserted all the way, you can close the orange levers to secure it. If the chair is connected to a kiosk system, we can install that kiosk harness into the cable guide. And then regardless of which system uh, it's connected to, we need to install the wiring into the other side of the inline connector. If it's attached to a kiosk system, the positive wire needs to be on the right and the negative on the left. Okay, then we can plug in the chair, power it on, and we're done.